Hey, what's going on summoners? Today, we're gonna be taking a look at how to never lose to split pushing again. The art of split pushing is one that has been around for years now. It has single-handedly carried many players like TF Blade to rank one. The strategy can be extremely hard to play against because of how uncoordinated solo queue is. However, we're gonna walk you through how to tackle split pushing in your games so that you don't give away your LP to this overused strategy. Let's hop right into the video. Before we can understand how to beat split pushing, first, we need to break down what it is. On the surface, split pushing is nothing more than permanently shoving a lane and taking turrets with your minions. But we're not here to look at the basic level of split pushing. To truly use the strategy to climb, it involves a ton of planning ahead and game understanding. Someone who is great at splitting will constantly be on the opposite side of the objective and will always look at their minimap. The overall goal of split pushing is to generate a ton of pressure for your team. If left unattended, you're likely to take multiple towers and depending on the state of the game, you may even end it. Now, if the enemy doesn't want to let you take turrets, they'll often have to send multiple enemies to finish you off. While this may not seem ideal, it opens up a few opportunities for your allies to take objectives or force a fight on the other side of the map. The versatility within this playstyle is one of the many reasons that splitting is just so powerful. No matter what you decide to do, it seems to always be a lose-lose situation. But trust us, with a little bit of careful planning and game awareness, you can deal with split pushing far easier than you may think. Split pushing is a tactic that has carried thousands of players into high elo. If you need some help learning how to counter or become a split pusher, be sure to check us out at ProGuides.com. Understanding when you can shove waves and when to sit out of vision can be hard at first. With our in-depth guides, we can help take your split pushing game to the next level. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24 seven to help you out. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and cover our first important step to countering split pushers. One of the biggest things we've seen in solo queue versus split pushers is not prepping your waves. Any champion that split pushes needs minions in order to do their job correctly. This means that if you're able to push the minion wave as close to the enemy base as possible, then you'll have far more time to make plays around the map. Think of it this way. If the enemy has to push 5 waves to get to your next turret, then you have 5 waves of time to be proactive with your team before you have to worry about the split pusher. However, if you fail to prep your waves, the enemy may only need to push 2 to 3 waves to start hitting your turret. This difference in downtime is an absolute game changer because it means that you'll have to respond to that pressure far sooner. Imagine how much can be done in the extra minute of time that you have just because you took some time to prep the waves for your team. Also, this will make it less impactful if you lose the fight at the objective because even with your team dead, it's unlikely that they can shove the waves fast enough before you respawn. There's a few ways to successfully prep your waves, but we're gonna break down the best way to do so versus split pushers. First things first, be sure you're able to safely push up without getting caught. You can do this by setting a vision or asking an ally to come with you. Next, push the wave back to the center of the map. From here, you can start a slow push and guide it one to two more waves if possible. Once you've set up the wave, be sure you still have time to reset and get to your team's next objective at least 45 seconds prior. This wave setup should give your team enough time to get vision together and look to claim the objective before the enemy is able to break your next turret. Keep an eye on your minimap while you prep the wave though, because one slight overstay can cause you and your allies to die before the objective. Those deaths will put all of your previous efforts to waste, and we don't want to do that. Since we're on the topic of prepping waves and fighting for objectives, we've got an extremely important note when facing split pushers with teleport. Teleport allows for these splitters to decide to either show up for a game-changing teamfight or to instead commit to a stronger split later on. When the enemy has teleport, it's best to try to burn the TP so that they no longer have the macro advantage. The easiest way to do this is to fake that you and your team are doing Baron. If the enemy team tries to fight 4v5, you're likely to win the fight. However, if the enemy uses their teleport to even the odds, then you're in a solid position to just leave the Baron alone and walk away. Burning teleport is extremely powerful and can often decide a game. Once your team builds enough of a lead, the enemy is forced to group with their team or commit to a split push since their TP is down. If they do decide to split, you can pull the trigger and force a 4v5, which should let you end the game afterwards. 
Just be sure to keep in mind that not every top laner takes teleport anymore, which can make this strategy seem a bit useless, but if they don't have teleport, then use that to your advantage. Think of it as if you've always forced them to use their TP, which means you can now force fights when needed. Now, before we move on to our next tactic for beating split pushers, let's not forget about our favorite pro guides tradition. Today, we want to ask you all, what split pusher do you absolutely hate playing against? Personally, I think Trindamir is extremely difficult to deal with because he takes turrets super fast and is incredibly mobile. Sure, you can argue that his early game is weak, until he crits you three times at level 1. Regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comments section down below. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and dive into our next set of strategies. When facing a split pusher in solo queue, it's important to always have a plan of action. It can seem difficult to do at first, but you just need to take it one step at a time. Before you attempt to do anything, move with your team to get vision control. This means walk with your support to set up a nice vision line and clear any enemy vision in the surrounding area. Be sure to carry a few pink wards so you can pink key locations such as the objective pit, the pixel brush, or the mid brush. Once you're able to establish strong vision with your allies, you can look to deal with the split pusher in a ton of different ways. Let's go over a few key actions you can take once you transition your vision control into a plan. One key thing you and your team can do is to pull the trigger on the enemy team. Now that you have strong vision control established, you can decide the game. Whatever objective or zone you are playing around is now your playing field. Use that power to your advantage and engage. Use whatever CC your team has to force an unexpected 4v5. Since the enemy is likely still splitting, you can get a few free kills from this fight and transition that into taking the objective and a few turrets. Just be sure that after the fight, you go answer the split pusher so that they don't trade multiple turrets or inhibitors in exchange. Using this option as an answer to split pushers depends on your team's composition. If you lack hard CC or engage, then you'll likely have to play for a death push. If that also doesn't seem to be working, then just accept that your comp isn't made for this kind of strategy and instead play using our next key option. Another option once you've established vision control is to collapse on the enemy split pusher. This is a great option when you know your team doesn't need the objective that you're looking to fight for. If your choices are something like killing the 6-0 Trindamir or getting the third dragon with a Cloud Soul, then make sure you go for the Trindamir. With him dead, you'll be able to push the lane out and maybe take a few turrets. Plus, if you kill him fast enough, you can still make it to the objective and force a strong 4v5. This type of coordination can be difficult to pull off in solo queue, especially in low elo. However, with a good attitude and some useful pings or shot calling, you can definitely pull it off. It can be hard to determine which of these plays is the best, but all it takes is some practice and some game awareness. Now that we've covered those two key points, we want to make sure you all understand that tempo is everything. When you're facing a powerful split pusher, every second counts. You don't have time to waste, so be sure that after you make a successful play, you check your map and make your next move. The more downtime you have in waste, the more the split pusher is able to gain a lead. Use your pressure as much as possible. Splitting is all about looking at your map and making your next move based on who you see and what objectives are coming up. This way of thinking is exactly what you should be doing as well. Think like your enemy so that you can catch them off guard. Don't waste your tempo and keep up the pressure after each play you make. Did you just kill the other four enemies? Then push for turrets and send someone to answer the split pusher so that they don't take turrets and CS. Are your waves not set up for a push? Then collapse on them and get their shutdown so that you can get even more time for more plays. What if none of these scenarios fit and you just have a bad wave set up and the enemy recall? Then use that time to take jungle camp, set up vision and get your items so you can be prepared for the next fight. Trust us, there's much less downtime than you think, so be sure to always be looking for your next step forwards. Now before we continue on to the end of the video, if you want to join an amazing community of people like you that love lists, talk pieces and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description below. So what are you waiting for? Join us! Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and take a look at our final few strats. Last but certainly not least, we've got the most important strategy of them all. Do not be passive. When you're facing a split pusher, it is not in your favor to take the game extremely slowly and give everything. Sure, sometimes it's a good idea to let your jinx scale to three items, but that's different than just not doing anything. 
Playing extremely passive only benefits split push champions because they tend to scale incredibly hard. Their entire kits are made to be some of the best duelist and tower taking champions in the game. That being said, they usually have some of the most expensive items in the game. This means that it takes them quite a bit to truly ramp up and become unstoppable. Taking your time and playing for your team strengths is fine. Just be sure that you're not playing super AFK and only to scale. Nearly every fight can be a 4v5, so it's okay that your Jinx isn't 3 items yet. Take the fight and snowball to victory, because if the game goes too long, well, good luck killing them. I'm sure you've all run into a 6 item Nasus with 1200 stacks at some point in your league career. That is what awaits those who give split pushers infinite time to scale. And that sums up our video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides fam at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Good luck out there on the rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.